Welcome to yet another live review. Two in a week. That's kind of a record for us. Yeah, that's certainly. Like, there's <laughs> really ever two lives this close to each other that are actually uh, interesting. Yeah. Or well, if they are, we can't make them, usually. Yeah. So, we've not long come back from seeing Love Bites. Uh, basically, sort of various forms of heavy metal, uh, very much influenced by New Wave. New wave of British heavy metal. I mean, Except not British. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Switch out them the Wobbum and go for Wobbum and the Wadrum. Yeah. Guess. So Japanese band in this case. Um, so kind of like Japan's answer to uh, Iron Maiden, really. Yeah, that's that's the best way to describe them. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, oh, and I suppose we've jumped the gun a bit, but should introduce. So we've got Pierce. Argo and Edmund. Um, yeah. um, so, first things first, I feel it necessary to th say this. Anyone who's ever said that um, women in women don't belong in metal can fuck right off. Because <laughs> seriously, they. They were channeling the essence. They they could stand, head, you know, toe to toe with, with oh. Iron Maiden, Testament. Um, well, it was a skill, not necessarily height. Really <laughs> <laughs> well, Bruce Dickinson isn't that tall. True, sure, he's kind of a small man. Yeah. Small man with a big mouth. Yeah. In a good way, though. <laughs> and um, well, the front woman was basically channeling. Um, Channeling Doro Pesh. Yeah, that's quite a bit Doro, though. Yeah. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, German? He's a German, yeah. Yeah. Uh, German power metal songstress. We were the most well known female vocalists in metal. Yeah. Also, probably Arch Enemy, depending on which area you're looking at. Actually, the is pretty well known. Yeah. Well, she's not there anymore. Mm. Um, but anyway, uh, so. Uh, so, first things first, quickly cover the support band, who were seven sisters. There weren't seven of them, and there weren't sisters. Yeah. Weren't female, but there were <laughs> But you didn't make a joke about it, saying, yeah, they're kind of disappointed that we're not a bunch of sisters, but... Eh, Instead, we're four ugly blokes. What you said, yeah. I mean, I heard that pretty much Love Bites as they're going around, like, getting a bunch of local bands to support, and these guys are from London. We performed in London, so that fits the bill. Yeah. yeah. Um... Unfortunately, didn't get to find out why they were called Seven Sisters. I'm assuming it's probably because they're from Seven Sisters in London, which is like two stops just where, from where we are now. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, they were basically, they were very much in keeping with the style of Love Bites. They were sort of very much a, meanwhile, it's an Iron Maiden gig. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. They were a pretty short set, but they were a lot of power. They were good. I've never heard of them until now, but that's what you get from local bands, but they're pretty solid, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they've got any releases. They've got a new album out, haven't they? Yeah. So, uh, What did you think of them? To us, uh, I mean, yeah, they, they were okay. I mean, they were very... Uh, yeah, they were very okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that they were sort of pushing the envelope in terms of style or anything like this, but... Um, there's a lot of room for growth and everything. What did strike me quite funny is um, it was like you had members of different bands making up sort of the reincarnations of members of different bands making up Seven Sisters. So, like, the lead guitarist looked like a young James, James Hetfield. The bassist looked like Jerry Cantrell. Um, yeah, the... The lead guitar, well, no, the, it was the lead guitarist who was the Jerry Cantrell lookalike, yeah. and the bassist looked like he'd just fallen off the back of a, another rock band, <laughs> <laughs> and the drummer was just sort of like every drummer ever, <laughs> including the crazy hair, which is sort of like that's it's kind of a kind of, kind of drummer that would very much become a green goblin in the future. Yeah. <laughs> um, we can't go to heavy metal because I'm not making spoiler type references. Um, 
but yeah, they they were they were enjoyable and competent, had a lot of charisma, so they were very much in keeping, sort of, as a warm up band. Um, I, I suppose that would be damning with faint praise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they were the, they were the job. They got the crowd hyped up, ready for the main act. Yeah, and the main act just blew everyone out the water. Really, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty damn good. <laughs> I, this is another instance where I'd never listened to them before, aside from one song. So, content you, yeah. So go listen to this one song. Mm. And you're like, this sounds good. Let's go. Yeah, so. and um, I was just sort. Of, I was blown away because it's sort of like, okay, one, they know how to play their instruments, and two, they know how to play their instruments. <laughs> now that it sounds like I'm making the same point twice, but what I mean by that is, consider bands like Dragon Force, who they're competent, but there's no real soul in their instrumentation or anything like that. It's basically a hitting as many notes as you possibly can kind of play where Dragon Force is concerned. Whereas in this case, it was they knew how to actually make the instrument sing. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean by that. Yeah. These guys, guys quite clearly know what they're doing and they quite clearly enjoy it. So. Yeah. Like, there is a lot of heart and soul in what they do. Yeah. Um, and you could tell that they were putting a lot of energy into it, sort of like, right at the end of the set, they were all exhausted. Yeah. Mm. Like, the, the uh, I want to say lead guitarist, but it's sort of, it was interchanging. <laughs> yeah, no, but it, sorry, I, was yeah I, guess, I guess there was uh, kind of like, a, there, there, there was kind of uh, very much an equal balance between the guitarists. I would not say there was a lead guitarist, I would say there was more... It's the metal thing. Let's just have double the guitars because guitars are cool. Yeah. We just got three guitar- yeah, three guitarists because guitarists are cool. Yeah. I mean, um, considering that there was a lot of moments where they were actually harmonising the guitars, yeah. which is something I've almost never seen. Yeah, just not, not having that off of what I've seen. Yeah. Whereas I think, it's not me here, she's the one to let the group up, and she's just like, yeah, I like metal. Let's make a metal band. Yeah. And they all made a metal band and they're having fun doing it. So yeah. <laughs> Um You had a lot of inter interplays of like you had the it's Miha who's the bassist, right? Miha's the bassist. Uh, she and one of the guitarists were doing the old back to back playing. Yeah, like an old get two people with big ass instruments and <laughs> play off each other. Mm. It's quite a common rock trope, but Yeah. It's cool. Well, it's, it's one of those things of that kind of shows that they're having fun. Yeah. Probably they're enjoying it. They're bouncing around. They're smiling. Especially Asa here, the singer. She was all the bits of being really happy and hyping the guy up and everything. Yeah. Oh, had a lot of charisma. Yeah. Um, massive apologies if I don't know for not getting the names. I, As I say, I only listened to one song before deciding, yeah, let's go see this. It's always a good thing to go into a band new. Yeah. yeah. So I, even if I know who the supports are, I quite often don't bother listening to them beforehand because I can just wear it on first hand actually out live. Yeah. It's kind of benefit of you know, hearing a band for the first time live. You, know, you can go and take it from there. Yeah. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose the distinction that you could make where the guitarists are concerned is that um, one of them was guitarist and keyboardist. Yeah, true. She did just stop playing, go to play the piano or keyboard, whatever it was, and then just go back to playing guitar almost immediately. Yeah. <laughs> More than one occasion for that. Yeah. yeah. Mm, quite more talented. But yeah, they played a hell of a show. Only had like, what, 12, 13 songs, I think it was? But their songs were on average about five, six minutes each, so. Um, <laughs> I d didn't really keep track, I was just enjoying myself. Well, I'm thinking more about it than, you know, the set that I've seen from, from the previous lives in this concert. Mm. So, that's in this tour. So, so, so. I mean, to be fair, how many albums have they got out? Well, 
Yeah. <laughs> so, one album, two EPs, plus another album on the way. Yeah. I think that first EP is also just Japanese versions of some of the songs that are on the album anyway, so. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the next album's going to be released in a couple of weeks anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah, it has a couple of weeks in Japan, and a couple, like a month after that in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, January in the UK. Yeah. So, 13 songs, average, I mean, that averages about sort of like six or seven songs per album. That's. I mean, it's not like if it was, say, Metallica and they only played 13 songs. Yeah, well, I mean, when you go starting out like this, you haven't got that much material to work with. Yeah. But they've got a hell of a show for the whole time they're up there. Yeah. So they're relatively new band as well. I mean, they've only been around a couple of years. Mm. So. That's actually pretty good going if they've, if, if they've <laughs> only been out a couple of years and they're already bringing out another album. Yeah, I mean, the first album came out early 2017, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, that's very good going then. You quite common with Japanese bands, they've got a hell of a lot of material. Mm. So, <laughs> those bands have done multiple tours already. Mm. Um, yeah. Just trying to think if there's anything really, anything else really significant of note, aside from the fact that I ch- I cheered myself hoarse. Yeah, he kind of lost his voice. Just going, ooh, hell of a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Which is, I kind of use that as a gauge for whether I've enjoyed myself. It's sort of like, oh, I can't speak. I had a good time. <laughs> that interesting than an encore. Mm. A lot of Japanese artists don't seem to do. Yeah. Like a lot of metal bands do, so I'm doing they're going more for the metal side of things. Yeah. They seem to be very heavily influenced by Western metal and also just the Western idea of concerts. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. It, like, I'm going to, I'm referring to Western bands and artists because, I, other than you know, the actual nationality, they're pretty much hard stuff with the band. Yeah, <laughs> because they're stars and sound. So yeah, it's sort of like you've got elements of Testament, elements of Slayer, elements of most new wave of British heavy metal yeah. stuff. Iron yeah. Maiden. Yeah, I was watching Amiho quite clearly. You know. Every like every other day, she goes on her Twitter and just posts different shirts that she's wearing of metal bands in the West. <laughs> she has a massive collection of metal band shirts. Mm. She's, she quite clearly really likes Western metal. Yeah. It's pretty much channeling that through this group. Mm. But yeah, um, not much left to really say aside from the fact that uh, if you get a chance to check them out live, definitely do so. Um, What are the names of their albums? Uh, Awakening from Abyss is their first album. Uh, the EP Battle for Damnation and new album Clockwork Immortality. It's one of the coolest names for an album. Mm. That is a pretty damn cool name. Yeah. I think one of the songs off that album today, actually. We did a video for it a few days ago and then played it live tonight. Mm. Which is cool. Yeah. And. <sighs> yeah. Um. No idea what will next be reviewed or anything like that, but the fact that I've already got another live review is somewhat of a miracle. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Check them out. They're good. Yeah. Fucking fantastic band. Mm. They're easily available. They've got all in YouTube stuff. They're on Spotify. You can get them in UK stores. Yeah. I think they've got an international web store now as well. They're pretty really mainstream, right. so they're, it's, it's pretty easy to get this stuff. Yeah. I mean, I saw them in HMV, so... Exactly. Yeah, I they've been in quite a few magazines and stuff. Like, magazines still exist somehow, but... like <laughs> They've performed in the UK almost as much as they've performed in Japan, so... They also at Wacken last year in Germany, and oh, also wow. stock in this country. Mm. So they were doing metal festivals over in Europe, and I thought they'd taken with, like, more powerful and other main names as well. Mm. So... They do like performing in the West, so they're... It's it's pretty easy to, to to catch them. Yeah, well, they're in America, in which case nothing's happened. But... Mm. <laughs> I mean, so they come back to the UK and Europe, but they haven't been in America yet. That's going to happen at some point. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, I was very lucky because I got my ticket last minute, and there was like one percent of tickets left, and I got mine from a relisting. So that goes to show how popular they are. Yeah, definitely popular. I mean, so relatively small venues, but because they haven't been that long, and they're a foreign band, they're definitely making waves already. And... Hopefully they'll carry on. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, that's it for this review. Uh, see you 
when next I decide to inflict something when on... hell freezes over. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. When I d- next decide to inflict something horrible on one of my co-hosts, probably think. you. Sorry Ooh. about that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> bye oh bye. See you guys. Yep. <laughs>